This is Mr. Weideman, and this is Regular Physics, page 113, problem number 62. Uh, this is the stopping distance problem. The first part of this, a um, little complicated. We've got to kind of think about it. Uh, the next part, uh, part B, uh, that's a little bit more difficult, but that's what we're here for. All right, let's break this down on the first part. Let's take a look at what I'm given here. Uh, the first thing that you should notice right off the bat is there's something i got to do with my givens here. This 90 kilometers per hour is not going to be compatible with this um, 10 meters per second squared acceleration. So I need to change my kilometers per hour uh, to this uh, meters per second. All right, now I'm, now I'm good to go. These, these numbers are workable. All right, so what do we exactly have to find out on this problem? Okay, I want to know my stopping distance. And is it equal to 40? One of the common mistakes students make is they plug 40 into their distance equation. This problem is a little bit different because 40 is a benchmark value. Uh, if my stopping distance is less than 40, I don't hit. My stopping distance is greater than 40, I do hit. So what I need to do is I need to calculate my stopping distance and then compare it to this 40 uh, to decide hit or no hit. So for now, this 40 really doesn't belong in our calculations. We just compare it to this after we're through. All right, so let's take a look at this. Probably one of the easiest ways to kind of visualize this is in a velocity uh, time graph. All right, if we look at our velocity time graph, we have two distinct regions. All right, I call it the distance he travels while, he'll, while the driver reacts and distance while the driver is braking. What's the difference between the two? Well, I take my foot off the accelerator and I go to reach for the brake. There's three quarters of a second. So the change in velocity in that three quarters of a second is insignificant. So I can say that I have a region of constant velocity, all right, which means no acceleration. And then as soon as I um, apply my brakes, now I've got an acceleration opposite direction of my velocity. I'm going to slow down. My velocity is going to change. So I have two distinct acceleration regions, acceleration of zero, acceleration of negative 10. And we know that when we work our kinematics, we have to chop things up into different regions of acceleration. So that's one of the first things. We have to realize we have two distinct time periods here. Acceleration equals zero, acceleration equals negative 10. Okay, once we have that, what I need to do is I need to calculate how far I'm going to move while I'm reacting. That's the area of this guy right here or just equation one of my magic five. I know this. I'm moving at 25 meters per second for three quarters of a second. All right, and next I have to calculate this uh, braking. Now, I, I don't have time. So uh, the only equation that's going to work for me here is equation number five. And what I have is my V final is a zero. I come to a stop. My V initial is the velocity from my first region pay attention to the negative acceleration, and all your signs are going to come out correctly. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say D total is the addition of these two values, distance traveled while I'm reacting, distance traveled while I'm braking, add the two together and compare it to 40 meters. Do I hit? Yes or no. All right, the second part of the problem, a mm, little bit more complex. Let's take a look. All right, so this is what we're given. And if you've done the calculations on the first part of the problem, uh, we notice that the 25 meters per second is too fast. And you're going to exceed the 40. So now what I want to do is I want to back calculate the initial velocity. When I back calculate the initial velocity, um, what's going to happen here? Well, this 25 meters per second is going to be something a little bit less than I had before. So uh, if we go to moving this guy around, okay, so that area is less, but that also makes the area of my triangle less. And 
keep that slope, and then I calculate that area and see if it's 40. Well, that's a bunch of guess and check. Um, that's not what we're going to do. All right, what we are going to do is we're going to go back to the same setup that we have before. We're just going to try to calculate a different variable. Now, this time I know that the distance to react, which is dependent on initial velocity, and my distance to break, which is dependent on my initial velocity, has to add up to 40. Okay, but I'm going to use the same equations, and I'm going to set this up. Now, on this one here, during my reaction, I do know time. And then my final velocity becomes zero, so I can set this up like this. And I have one equation, one unknown. Now, it is a quadratic that you have to solve, so we want to find the roots or the solutions or the zeros to quadratic. So I've got it set up as a quadratic. Um, obviously, this is not going to factor nice, but if you want to use the quadratic formula, there's A, there's B, there's C. And you can set it up and do the quadratic equation. Um, I think that's kind of yucky. What I would do is I would just graph this in my calculator. And remember, our acceleration is negative. So A is going to be negative. It's going to be a parabola turned upside down. And you're going to have two solutions. One of them will make sense. The other one will not. All right, so solve the quadratic, and you have the answer to this problem. Kind of tricky. Uh, don't really expect you to be able to do this type of problem uh, on your own. But now that you see how it's done, you should be able to do it. All right, good luck with it, and uh, see you guys in class.